In this video, we're going to replicate reciprocating saw motion. After completing this step, you'll be able to ground a component, create a rigid group, and use as built joints. In Fusion 360, we want to carry on with our reciprocating saw motion. At this point, we've taken a quick look at grounding some components and creating an as built joint. But everything else in this design is free to move about. So we need to make sure we understand how to lock it all in place and how we can create that mechanical motion. For this example, I'm not gonna be worrying about the trigger since we already took a look at that. So I'm gonna hide the trigger and the trigger components as well as anything else that's not going to be part such as this battery connector. Really what I wanna focus on is all the motion that happens up front. I'm gonna rotate around to a front view and note that a lot of our components are black. One thing that we can do is go to inspect and use component color cycling. This allows us to get a colorization of all the components in the design, and oftentimes this can be a bit easier for us. We also have names of a lot of the components. And the first step in this process is for us to understand what components move and what components stay still. So as we look at these components, we know that the housing is going to stay still. So the saw handle casing, I'm gonna right click and ground it. Then I'm gonna hide it for right now so I can focus my attention solely on all the mechanical motion. This piece over here is actually the trigger slide joint and if we want to, we can hide the joint so we don't see them on the screen. We have a couple pieces here and every time we select a piece, it's gonna highlight inside of the browser. So we have the blade guard assembly, and with the blade guard assembly, we have this extra piece for the blade guard, and we have some pins, and we have some small other pieces. As we move these pieces around, this portion, the blade guard base, is gonna rotate about the pins. So this tells me that the pins themselves, this piece, as well as this main portion of the housing, these blocks and a lot of other components are actually going to be stationary. You can see here that there is a bolt piece. There's a lot of other pieces that really don't need to move. So what I want to do is I want to isolate the components that are going to be fixed, and I'm going to temporarily hide everything that's going to move. So the blade itself is going to move. Portions up here, which are the blade holder assembly, is going to move. This piece back here, which is the connecting rod and all of its bearings and bushings are gonna move. This pin and this gear, which is the large spur gear, the small spur gear and the short rod, those are all gonna move. However, this big gear shaft, the motor and all the other components are gonna stay stationary. This piece here is gonna rotate, which is my blade guard, but everything else should stay fixed. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna revert the position and I wanna create a rigid group with all of these components. What I'm telling Fusion 360 is that all of these components together make up one solid piece. So I'm gonna select rigid group and I'm gonna select all the components. In order to do this, I can quickly and easily go into the browser and I can select my saw handle casing, which is already grounded. I can select the gear housing cover, which is this top piece, the blade guard assembly. There is an include child components, which will automatically grab all those sub pieces. And then the big gear shaft, the motor internals, the motor itself doesn't need to move, the guide blocks, and the gear housing. When I say okay, now all of these components are going to be considered rigid in relation to the handle casing. This means that if I unground the casing, they're all gonna move as one. And this is exactly what we want. I'm gonna go into the timeline and I'm gonna delete that unground. This means that everything else in here is fixed. I don't need to see the handle casing and there's a couple other components I don't need to see. I don't need to see the gear housing cover. I don't really need to see the guide blocks. And I don't need to see this hardware. So this is part of the blade guard assembly, but some of it is going to be important. The hardware itself is not going to be important, neither is the washer or 
the two pins. I can get rid of the washers and the two pins, and then I can bring back the blade guard base. The reason I can get rid of those is because we're going to be using an as-built joint. When we're using an as-built joint, it makes use of the location of the components, so we don't need to make a bunch of selections. I'm going to change it to Revolute. I'm going to select the components I'm interested in, and then I'm going to select the rotation position. Once I say OK, now this is free to pivot, even though we hid the rest of the parts. I'm going to revert its position. I'm going to bring back all the additional parts, which are part of a rigid group. But now I can hide the blade guard and the blade guard assembly. From here, we want to start to create the motion for the reciprocating saw itself. So what I need is I need the big gear, which is called the large spur gear. And then there's also a portion of it, which is the short rod. I need to make those a rigid group. So I'm going to go into rigid group. I'm going to make the big gear, this pin, and the clip on the end a rigid piece. So now they all move together. Then I can make an as-built joint, revolute between the pin, which is fixed, and the gear. And now I can allow the gear to rotate around, which means that the small pin is going to go with it. From here, we can pick up some more of the components we need. We have the blade holder assembly, and then we also have a small gear, which is on the back side connected to the motor, and that is not really necessary for what we need, so I'm not going to worry about the motion, but there is a tool called a motion link that allows you to create that gear movement. So keep in mind that we can do a revolute joint for that gear by using as built, between it and the motor and simply pick its position. And then later on downstream, we could come back and create a motion link based on the number of teeth. But right now we're gonna keep moving our way forward, taking a look at the connecting rod. The connecting rod has several bushings in it. So once again, we're gonna create a rigid group between the connecting rod and all of its child components. We can select each of those bushings manually if we want, if we want to get rid of something else, such as the holder, so we can see it, we can also grab that bushing, make sure that we grab everything, and we'll say OK. Notice as we move it around, there is an extra piece in here. So this piece right here looks like a duplicate of the crank arm, and I'm going to hide that. Next, we're going to come into Assemble, As-Built Joint, and once again, we're going to do a Revolute between the pin and the link. Then we're gonna minimize the connecting rod and we're gonna bring back the blade holder assembly. The blade holder assembly is gonna have a revolute as-built joint between the link. And once again, it's gonna pivot here. But the next thing that we need to do is we need to make a slider joint. So once again, we'll do an as-built joint. This time it'll be a slider joint for this and the other component is going to be the housing. It's going to slide along this axis, and notice how it's not moving. And it's not moving because we need to select the center point and then we can allow it to move. The next thing that we need to do is once again make that rigid group. So all these end components are going to be rigid and fixed with the rest of the housing. We need to make sure to grab all the pieces, move it back, and say OK. Now, this should move in and out as we rotate the gear. That's that reciprocating motion that we we're expecting to see. I'm going to revert position and go back to home, and we need to find the blade itself. So the blade is going to be rigid with the end piece here. So once again, assemble, rigid group. Now we can include all those together. If we want, we can now bring back the guide block, we can bring back the blade guard assembly, we can bring back the gear housing cover, and even the reciprocating saw housing. We can go back to inspect and turn off component color cycling. And now, if we rotate the motor, you can see that the blade moves in and out. If we want to create a motion study of this to watch it move, we can go into assemble, we can create a motion study, and we can pick the joint that we're interested in. 
we can determine how much we want it to move. In this case, at 60, I'm going to say it's going to move 360 degrees. I can allow it to loop, and then I can just play through, allowing it to move in and out so I can see the reciprocating saw motion. It took a little bit of work simply because there was a lot of different components that we had to either create rigid or that we had to somehow add an as-built joint. But if you do all the work of putting all the components or modeling them all in their correct position, it saves a lot of time in the selection process when you get to this stage and you begin to create all that mechanical motion. The last note for you is anytime we create joints, whether they're as-built joints based on the position of the components, or if we use the joint option to align them at the same time, they're going to be located in the component that houses everything. For example, the trigger had two external components. We had this trigger and then we had the pieces inside of this internal mechanisms. Then when we added all the other joints, such as our revolutes and our sliders, all of the components were inside of internal mechanics. So its joints folder is located here. We can hide all of them by simply changing the visibility of the joints folder. But now we have that mechanical motion that helps us better understand the motion of all the different saw components. And we can better plan our designs and the limitations of our designs based on these mechanical motions. From here, let's make sure that we save before we move on. 